It has stood the test of time. God's Book, the Bible. Still relevant in today's complex world. It is written. Sharing hope around the globe. Thanks for joining me today on It Is Written. I'm John Bradshaw. With me today, a special guest. We're talking about the New Age movement and how New Age practices and principles have infiltrated Christianity today. With me, best-selling author Will Barron, who has extensive experience in the things of the New Age. Will, thanks for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be here. Explain for me, if you would, in broad terms or narrow terms, however you wish, what's the New Age movement? Well, the New Age movement was a new spirituality that was introduced primarily from the Theosophical Society, founded in 1875 by a Russian mystic called Madame Blavatsky. She was a medium. She communicated with spirit beings that she believed were from God. And I personally started getting involved in this movement through psychology and through self-help psychology, later through professional psychologists, and I migrated over then into Eastern mysticism and was practicing yoga, Eastern meditation, studying the occult, astrology, numerology, many of these different topics that are very popular today. Let me go fast forward and then fast backward. Well, at least come forward from where you were. You were a New Age priest, is that correct? That is correct, yes. But you had been raised in a Christian home. That is correct, yes. Okay, okay. So, first thing that we're going to point out here is that it's possible even for Christians to get tied up in, in really satanic New Age practices. Absolutely. How did it happen in your life? Even though I was a Christian, brought up in a Christian family, I didn't have any close relationship with Jesus Christ. I believed that I was saved, and I believed that through church attendance and through this belief in Jesus that everything would be fine. But in terms of my lifestyle and my activities, I was not studying the Bible. I did pray, but not really diligently. And I was fascinated by occult movies. And somehow inside of me, I was captivated by the mystical and the occult. And somehow paranormal phenomena had an interest that was precipitated inside of me. And I started reading books on the occult, reading books on out-of-body experiences, reading books on reincarnation. And gradually over the years, I finally severed all connection with Christianity and started getting involved in the occult. Now, what's interesting is that a lot of people will say, um, there's no harm in watching these movies. I mean, there are loads of Christians, as you well know, who watch occult-themed movies thinking they're watching something that's essentially harmless because it's not real. You would say it's not harmless. I would say it's not harmless because it is real. These movies are portraying a real power that is ultimately coming from Satan. And by people watching these movies, the fascination with the occult is implanted inside of them. And sooner or later, they will gravitate away from the fiction of the movies to the real world of the occult. And that's exactly what happened to me. Take this a little bit further. You started getting involved in reading and watching, and now you said this started to take over your life. What happened? Basically, in my mid-20s, I started to realize that I was depressed in my life. And I was running out of options, where to get excitement, where to get fulfillment. I had pretty good jobs, but it seemed to me there was something missing. And I was basically depressed. And I had certain problems also, problems in relationships, problems with addictions. And I realized I needed some kind of power outside of myself that would bring solutions to my life and that would bring contentment. I always felt there was a mystical dimension to life, a spiritual dimension. I didn't know where to find it. I felt that traditional Christianity was not the answer. And so I started then looking to Eastern mysticism, to New Age psychics, to mystical power. 
And certainly there was power in the New Age, a lot more power than in psychology. But it is, unfortunately, a deceptive satanic power. In just a moment, I'll be asking Will some further questions about where his life went in his involvement with the New Age movement. And then we'll be talking about how the New Age movement has come into Christianity and might even be affecting your life. Don't go away. I'll be right back. It Is Written is dedicated to sharing the gospel around the world. To discover more about It Is Written, I invite you to visit our website, itiswritten.com, and browse the dozens of pages that describe what we do and how we do it. Let's get to know each other better. Visit our website, itiswritten.com, today. Thanks for joining me today on It Is Written. Today, the New Age movement infiltrating Christianity. I'm speaking with best-selling author Will Barron, who's been on television and held hundreds of seminars around the world on the subject of the New Age and its infiltration into Christianity. He speaks from experience, having once been a New Age priest. Will, a couple of moments ago, you talked about how you were drawn into and fascinated by occult themes and the things of the New Age. Where did that eventually lead your life? Or, let me ask you this, what did you start getting involved in as a New Age priest? Well, you don't start out as a New Age priest. I just started out as someone that was looking for solutions to my depression. I went and had a psychic reading, and this psychic had tremendous power. She was able to describe in intimate detail people that I'd been associated with and certain aspects of my life. And she invited me to attend classes in that center. And I was so intrigued by this, what was to me real psychic ability, that I started attending these classes. I started to learn how to practice transcendental meditation, how to communicate with spirit guides, how to communicate with what were called the ascended masters, supposedly God's representatives on planet Earth. And I basically gave myself over to being a disciple of a spirit guide that appeared to me about one year after I started attending classes at this New Age Center. And this spirit guide had incredible light when he appeared in this vision, and I believed he was a divine being. Psychics, we sometimes laugh them off, make jokes about them, but they're real, aren't they? I would say some of them are probably not. Mm -hmm. Some of them are there just to make some money. But some of them. As entertainment. Mm -hmm. Some of them, though, that have spirit guides that are are in communication with what I now believe are satanic angels, evil spirits. These evil spirits have a lot of knowledge. They know all about us, and they can communicate telepathically this information into the mind of a channeler or a medium, a psychic reader, and they, the psychic reader will then issue that information, communicate it, and it sounds as if they have got tremendous psychic abilities, but I believe now it is completely demonic and satanic and terribly, terribly deceptive. So people, even Christians, who might think about going and speaking to a, a psychic, again, they may, some of them may just be phonies. However, what you're saying is, and I believe this to be true, of course, in speaking to one of those people, the person visiting the psychic is simply receiving information that comes right from the devil himself. Absolutely, yes. That cannot be a safe practice for a Christian. Absolutely dangerous. Even though it appears to be truth what is spoken, because a psychic can narrate events from your life. The point that I think is very important is what some people might want to just write off as being fantasy and fiction is really real. What does this suggest to us or tell us about the reality of the spirit world? Absolutely real. It is as real as anything we see in this physical world. For people that have been involved in the occult, we know firsthand that is a dimension that exists. And I believe Satan himself tries to brainwash the secular world into thinking that Satan does not exist. In fact, one of the major teachings of the New Age movement is that Satan does not exist. Does not exist. Does not exist, yes. Therefore, any kind of mystical experience that you have any kind of channeling or mediumship practice is always within the realm of that which is of God. Because if Satan doesn't exist, it must be within the realm of God. And this is a terrible, terrible deception. Yeah. So tell me what happened next. You, you started to get quite deep into this and really gave your life to following these pursuits. Yes. 
um, when I had that visionary experience where my personal spirit guide, who had the name Joao Kul, when he appeared to me in this incredible vision and invited me to become one of his personal disciples, I then gave my life over to his instructions. He would communicate with me maybe two or three times a week, initially during the practice of Eastern Transcendental Meditation. I would hear this voice inside my mind, and it was very clear, as if you were hearing my voice or I'm hearing your voice. And he would give me practical instructions how to change my life. And he then promised me that I would have a prominent part within this New Age movement to launch this new era, this new world order that the New Age movement is endeavouring to bring about within society throughout the whole world. As a disciple of this spirit guide, the first two or three years felt very blessed. There were a lot of exciting things happening in my life, mm -hmm. but eventually that discipleship relationship became absolute slavery, a nightmare of slavery to what I now believe to be a demonic spirit. So to begin with, what the spirit guide was telling you was, was helpful and good. Very helpful. But yes. then it crossed over. Yes. How did that become onerous? Well, for example, the leader of our New Age Center, where I was a senior board member, launched an advertising promotion program and she invited people to make donations from within the clients of that center. And when I got back to the apartment where I was living, my spirit guide told me to immediately send Muriel a check for $1,000. There was a problem. I didn't have any money. Oh. I, at that time, could hold a two-way mind-to-mind telepathic communication with this spirit guide. And so I asked the spirit guide, where am I going to get the money from? And he said, use your MasterCard. And I recall that I did have MasterCard checks that had been mailed to me. And so I wrote out one of these checks. So I, here I am, I have no money, and I write out a check for $1,000 on my MasterCard and mailed it then to the New Age Center's leader. Two days later, my spirit guide spoke to me again and congratulated me on my obedience to his instructions. But he said, that's not enough money. You need now to send another check for $2,000. At that point, I was very afraid. I thought, perhaps I'm getting involved in some kind of cult, but there was no escape. The spirit guide was hounding me and demanding that I send that money, and I felt terrible depression, worse depression than the clinical depression that I used to experience prior to getting involved in the New Age. Hmm. Finally, the depression was so bad, I felt I had to choose suicide or choose obedience. There was no intermediate ground because I felt so bad. I wrote out one of these MasterCard checks for $2,000. As soon as the envelope with that check dropped in the mailbox, the depression lifted instantly. And of course, the forced donations didn't stop there. Another three days later, the spirit guide came back and said, this time I need you to send another check, this time for $3,000. This is the beginning of what I call the new age nightmare, total slavery to a demonic spirit. And there was no way I could get out of that, of my own strength. This satanic spirit had more power than I had, and I was trapped. I've read the story about your encounter with the uh, demonic spirit and the donations in your book, Deceived by the New Age, a powerful book, a best-selling book, and you've talked about this book on television networks across the United States and around the world. In just a moment, let's talk about how you managed to get out of there, because right now I'm thinking there is no way out for Will Barron, but evidently there was. And we'll find out how Will managed to get out of the New Age movement in just a moment. In Matthew 4.4, 4, the Word of God says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every Word is a one-minute Bible-based daily devotional presented by Pastor John Bradshaw and designed especially for busy people like you. Look for Every Word on selected networks or watch it online every day on our website, itiswritten.com. Receive a daily spiritual boost. Watch Every Word. You'll be glad you did. Thank you for being with me today. I'm John Bradshaw. This is It Is Written. And with me, best-selling author and former New Age priest, Will Barron. 
Will, a moment ago, you were talking about how you were getting deeper and deeper and deeper into your involvement in the New Age movement. Now the, the, the spirit guide was making demands on you that you were starting to feel were terrible. From where we are in the story, I don't see the way out. So tell me what happened next. Before I was rescued from New Age, the deception got even deeper. Our New Age center was led by a psychic called Muriel Isis, well-known professional psychic in Los Angeles. She said that our New Age center was no longer going to come under the supervision of the ascended master, Joel Kuhl, which was my personal spirit guide and her personal spirit guide. She had now been visited by Jesus Christ and that Jesus Christ was now taking over our center and we needed to change into a Christian church organization. I was astounded that this, this would happen because in sentiment, I was somewhat anti-Christian. And Muriel, the founder and director, now started giving Bible study classes. We started holding Sunday morning worship services. Real Bible studies classes, studying the book of John and, and how Jesus treated people and Bible doctrines. Well, we were studying the Bible, but Muriel would give the mystical or esoteric explanation of certain doctrines within the Bible. Okay. So it was not quite your typical conventional Christianity, but we called ourselves New Age Christians. We still practiced transcendental meditation. We still had astrology classes and numerology classes. We still practiced holistic health. We were still channeling. But instead of channeling various ascended masters, we were now channeling only Jesus the Christ. And this Jesus who was not the real Jesus Christ. It was the other Jesus the Apostle Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. This other Jesus, this counterfeit Jesus, this fake Jesus started taking over our center. And for the next two years, I now believed that I was a follower of Jesus Christ. I even underwent immersion baptism. I even was speaking in tongues, but it was all counterfeit with a very specific mission of introducing new age techniques and teachings into Christian churches. Teaching such as what? My new spirit guide, who called himself Jesus Christ, the mission that he gave me was to infiltrate regular Christian churches and to try to find people that would be interested in practicing what we called Christian meditation, which was the basically New Age Eastern Hindu transcendental meditation, just given a Christian name. And so I was told to infiltrate different evangelical and mainline churches and start meditation groups in those churches. Were you successful? I was not, because it was only a few weeks after that new mission that in a miracle I was actually rescued from the New Age deception. Well, I, I want to get to that, but I, I want to follow this thought here a little further. So what you're saying is that there are Christian churches across the Fruited Plain who are accepting into their fellowship and into their practices ideas that they think are Christian and are going to help them in their Christian growth. But in actual fact, the ideas that they're accepting in are, are out and out New Age spiritualism. Mm. Yes, there was a pastor of one quite sizable evangelical church, and I believe this is a good church, who literally invited me to start a meditation group in his church. And this, this infiltration is deliberate? Absolutely deliberate, yes, yes. People who were controlled by evil spirits like myself were given instructions and commands from their spirit guides to infiltrate Christian churches, to go to worship services, to attend Bible study groups, to attend home study groups, to make friends with Christians, and to basically feel out for people that might be interested in this type of mystical Christianity. Somebody gets a flyer in their mail. It's the XYZ church on the corner. And they're offering classes in Christian meditation or Christian yoga. They get this flyer in the mail and they say, oh, that, that could be interesting. You get that flyer in the mail and you say, I know just what this is. Yes. 
now, today, we are finding a lot of new age mystical meditation techniques infiltrating into the Christian church. These things are not harmless that are coming into Christianity. They're not harmless. You'd say they're not harmless. They're absolutely dangerous. Okay, we're going to talk more about those in a moment. But, but for now, you were given the mission of, of, of bringing some of these things into Christianity, but you were rescued. Yes. Okay, how? When our New Age Center converted into a Christian church, I started to study the Bible and I started to visit Christian bookstores. I needed to know how to communicate with Christians. I needed to know what they were teaching. And my spirit guide encouraged me to study some of the teachings of Christianity. And the amazing thing is, as I visited Christian bookstores, as I started studying the Bible, as I started reading Christian books, a point came in my life where the real Holy Spirit interceded in my life. And my parents were very dedicated Christians. They had been praying for me for 16 years, and the Holy Spirit saw an opportunity and rescued me from that terrible deception. I had what you might call a true enlightenment where the Holy Spirit just opened my eyes and my heart to the truth that I was a slave of demonic spirits and that what we were teaching in this New Age Christianity was not the same as is clearly taught in the Bible. That is a gospel of the Antichrist. And I was delivered and rescued from that terrible deception. Was it easy to get out? Was, no. it, was it just a matter of walking out the door? No, I won't be there. absolutely not. What did you go through in getting out? In my mind, I knew that the new age was deception, that it was satanic, that it was not compatible with the Bible. I knew that in my mind, but the satanic spirits would still manipulate my emotions and manipulate especially my thinking they would speak into my mind tormenting thoughts, chastising thoughts, and it was a struggle for five years. Five years? Five years, yes, yes. How do you, how, but how do you get out of that? Is it, do you will your way out? Do you wait it out? Or is there something that somebody who's going through this kind of torment or, or, or pressure needs? Is it, is it prayer and fasting? Is it the laying on of hands? Is it, what do you go through to get out? I would say primarily you need to study the Word of God to be anchored in truth so that no matter what these voices in your mind from demonic spirits are telling you, you can always respond as Jesus did, it is written, so that you cannot be deceived on the intellectual level. On the emotional level and this satanic uh, voice level, you just have to ignore it. It is a matter of faith. By faith, you move forward and you ignore all these demonic spirits. And I found that singing also helped. To sing Christian songs or praise music seemed to drive demons away. And also prayer, dedicated prayer, being part of a Christian fellowship is very, very important. And after five years, these demons pretty much left me alone. And I praise God for that deliverance because I was rescued from a, a terrible, terrible nightmare of depression. Oh, amen. Praise God for his goodness. A couple of things that come to my mind now. There are, there are people watching who are saying, so there's hope for my son or my daughter. Absolutely, yes. And there's someone watching who's saying, so there's hope for me. Absolutely. There's hope for me. So yes. there is a way out. You can be, you can be held here in, in chains. Yes. But there is a way out. I think I was as deeply enslaved by spirits as you can get without being insane, as deeply enslaved. But the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God is stronger than that of Satan. And Satan has to relinquish that power when the power of the Holy Spirit is at work. But it's not easy. The best thing, don't get involved in the New Age paraphernalia to begin with. But if you are, there's hope. And if there are parents watching this program and their sons or daughters or grandsons or granddaughters are involved in New Age, they need to pray, if necessary, for 16 years like my parents did, if necessary, longer than 16 years. But God looks for an opportunity, and he works a miracle of deliverance. Will Barron, thank you very much for being part of today's program. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. You've uh, written a magnificent book, and you've given a lot of people a couple of things today. Light, this thing is real. 
these spirits and their deceptions are very, very real, and they the, we're being targeted. Christians are being targeted. Yes, you've helped us to know the safest thing is just to stay away, and there yes. is a way out for those who are deceived. Yes, thank you very much for that encouragement today. We must pray and ask God's blessing on so many people who have been affected by this new age deception. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful today that Jesus is a mighty Savior and a great Deliverer. And we thank you that Satan's plans need not triumph in the life of any one person who might call out to you for help and grace. Father, I pray for those praying for family members who are caught up in this terrible web. And I pray for those who themselves are stuck in this place and know they ought not be there. Let there be special grace and blessing. And might people like Will find their way out of the new age and find their way to Jesus Christ. We thank you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There's something special I want to share with you today, and it's absolutely free. The Bible is a book that's 2,000 years old. Is it relevant for us today, and can it really be trusted? I want to share with you a special study on this subject called We Can Believe the Bible. In just a few power-packed pages, you'll discover what the Bible itself has to say on this vital subject. And it's our free gift to you. This study guide discusses who wrote the Bible, why it's considered the most important book of all time, and most importantly, how it can change your life forever. This study is not only informative, but practical and answers some of the most important questions ever asked on a subject that really matters. To get your free copy from It Is Written, call 1-800-253-3000 and ask for We Can Believe the Bible or write to us at It Is Written, Box O, Thousand Oaks, California, 91359 and we'll mail a copy to your address in North America. And be sure to visit our website, itiswritten.com, where you'll discover additional helpful resources on a host of life-changing topics. It Is Written is a faith-based outreach made possible by viewers like you. Thank you for your letters and emails, and thank you for your continued financial support. It Is Written exists because of the kindness of people who want to be part of sharing God's good news with the world. The number to call to receive We Can Believe the Bible is 1-800-253-3000 and our web address is itiswritten.com. There's so much more to talk about that we didn't get to this week. I hope that you'll join me next time as I speak to Will Barron again about the way the New Age movement has infiltrated Christianity in very real ways. Until then, remember, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God.